All righty. So we're actually, like I said, we're going to skip this part, and we're just going to jump right in to the next page. Okay, and we'll skip those questions as well. We'll just jump right into the triangle proportionality theorem. So as you saw in the explore, well, we didn't see it, but we'll just take its word for it. When a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides of the triangle, the lengths of the segments are proportional. Okay, so in a picture, here we have a triangle, okay, and we have this line here, line EF, parallel to this side BC, okay. This parallel line creates proportional side measures, AE to EB with the same ratio as AF to FC, okay. So again, AE to EB, part to part, will equal the same ratio as part to part here, okay? Notice what they do not say, and I'm going to put it in here. AE over EB does not equal EF over BC and does not equal AF over FC. Okay, and maybe actually I'll, I'll put that as a separate thing. EF, BC, AF over FC. Okay. Those ratios there, right? So let me let me highlight these A, E, and E, B. So A, E, E, B, those will be in the same relationship as A, F to F, C. But notice what is not true. What is not true? A, E to E, B, right? So this ratio will not be the same as E, F to B, C is. Okay? Why? Well, because consider what you're matching up here. For the first ratio that is true, we're taking a part of one side over a part of that same side, and we're setting the same ratio as a part of the other side over that, that other part of the other side, okay, right here. So again, these ratios, you can see how they're kind of like matching pieces. But then if we try and say like AE over EB, okay, a part and a part equals then a full side of a triangle over the full side of the triangle, you can see how that's not the same kind of relationship, okay? so. While those are ratios that we can use, we want to be careful about how we set them equal to each other. Okay. AEEB is the same as AFFC, but AEEB is not the same as EFBC. Okay, not the same. All right, and that's going to be very important that we distinguish between the two. Okay, in a sense, this is what some of us were trying to do in the warm up. Okay, some of us were trying to take parts of the shadows, right, this part 3 to this part 9, okay, and say it was in the same ratio as the 5.75 was to the x, but we can see the error of our ways here. Yes, 3 would be okay because it is a full side of the triangle, but 9 is not a full side, okay, so it will not relate in the same way that the full side here, 5.75, matches to the full side here, x, okay. So what would be in the same ratio here it would be like this one and this piece, okay, so if I called this length, I don't know, like a, and this length here, out, like B, okay, let me do it this way. Then we could say that like A over B would equal 3 over 9. That's okay. These are parallel, right? They're both perpendicular to the ground, so they're going to be parallel. Okay? A over B would be 3 over 9. That's okay to say that, but not the way we had it. Okay? All right. So we're actually going to prove, we're going to go through this proof here of proving the triangle proportionality theorem is true. Okay, so we're going to start first with saying that EF is parallel to segment BC. So we've got what we see right here in the diagram. Okay, so, and we're ultimately going to show that AE over EB is equal to AF over FC. Okay, that's our ultimate goal here to show that triangle proportionality theorem. So, well, step one, we'll show that the two triangles are similar. Okay, so since EF is parallel to BC, we conclude that angle one and angle two and Ang sorry, we conclude that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 3 is con angle congruent to angle 4 by the blank theorem. So how do we know that 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 are going to be congruent there? 
what special angles are they? Corresponding, yeah, corresponding angles theorem. Something we learned back in unit two. Okay, back in September, we're still using that corresponding angles theorem. Okay, so triangle AEF is similar to triangle ABC by the angle angle theorem, right? So you got two pairs of congruent angles. So angle angle similarity theorem. Okay. Really, we didn't need to show one and two and three and four were congruent because we could just show one and two, and then since both of these triangles have angle A by the reflexive property, we could have done it that way too. But anywho, done it that way. Okay. So we have step one, we've shown the triangles are similar, but we're not done yet because we still want to come up with this conclusion here. Okay, now, since we have similar triangles, we can then use the fact that corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional to then prove that AE over EB equals AF over FC. Okay, so we start with AB over AE is equal to, and then what other ratio of corresponding sides? So we started with we started with AB over AE. So what other ratio can we set that to equal to here in this triangle? AB over AE should equal what? AB over AE should equal what other ratio here in the triangle? AB over AE. What's another ratio that could set that equal to in the triangle there? Not really. Scared. Yeah, Stephen, you want to try? Uh, AC and AF. Yeah, AC over AF. Is that what you're going to say to Madison? Yeah. Good. AC over AF. Perfect. Okay, well done. That's true because we proved the triangle similar, so we know that their sides are proportional. So AE, AB over AE, AC over AF. Very good. Now, you'll see here they took AB and rewrote it as AE plus EB. Isn't that the case, right? AB is AE plus EB. So how should we rewrite things over here? Where we have AC over AF, how can we rewrite AC as what? AC is what plus what? See? Uh, you got it. AF plus FC all over AF. Now, you can simplify, right? AE over AE is 1. EB over AE, that stays the same. AF over AF will also simplify to 1 plus FC over AF. Okay, so there's that. Let me get rid of this now. And then what can we take away from both sides here? They both have a 1. Let's just subtract. FC over AF. Okay, and then what they do here, EB over AE, to then make it AE over EB, what they do? Or what should this be over here? In an equivalent fashion. Okay? Yeah, exactly, just do the reciprocal. And voila, we have the triangle proportionality theorem. Right, there is the a, AE over EB, AE over EB, AF over FC. There it is. Okay, we proved it. <clears throat> okay. So, now let's apply that theorem. So, for example, in letter A here. Okay, in letter A. We have a big triangle. Okay, and then two sides of that big triangle are cut by a parallel line to that third side. Okay. So this ports, puts us into a proportion. We want to find the length of CY, so I'll call that X. Okay, what's the ratio? What's the ratio that we could write here? What's A ratio that we could write here? What over what? Yes, yeah, Steve? Uh, 9 over 4. 9 over 4 has to equal what over what then? Uh, 10 over X. 10 over X, exactly right. Okay. 9 over 4 equals 10 over x. So we cross multiply here. We get 9x equals 40. So divide both sides by 9. x equals ugh, 40 over 9, which is not going to be a nice number. Uh, it'll be 
four and four ninths, I think, which is like 4.4 .4 repeating. You do that in your calculator there. Okay. <clears throat> Triangle proportionality theorem. Using those parallel lines, okay, that cuts the two sides into proportional, proportional ratios there. We could have done this problem, though, without the triangle proportionality <coughs> theorem, okay? You'll see we have two triangles as well, right? Big triangle, little triangle. Are these two triangles similar? Will they be similar? Yeah, okay, yeah, right. We're going to have corresponding angles congruent, so they'll be similar by angle, angle. So another way you could have set up this ratio is done 9, 9, which is the full side of the small triangle, 9 over, what's the matching or corresponding full side of the big triangle? What's that? 13, right? 9 plus the 4, 13, equals, okay, we got another side here, 10 of the small triangle over, what would we say is the matching full side of the big triangle? X plus 10, right? That's the expression for it. Now, watch this. Cross multiply, we get 130. And then 9, remember the 9 distributes to the x and the 10, so we have 9x plus 90. Okay, subtract 90 from both sides, we end up with, um, oh goodness, 40 equals 9x. Divide both sides by 9, guess what we get? x equals the same answer there, 40 ninths. Okay, so two different ratios two different relationships that we utilized here, both result in the same answer, okay? So you have some freedom here about how you choose things, but it's not just any old ratio you can use. You have to match corresponding parts. The first one, okay, the first one, we matched up parts of sides. Four, sorry, the nine and the four in the same way as the 10 over the X, okay? In the second one, we use triangles. Nine is the full side of the smaller triangle over 13, the matching full side of the big triangle, 10 is the full side of the small triangle over the matching full side 10 plus x, okay? Do I care which way that you use? No, but I do care that you get it right, okay? So please, again, be careful about how you set this up. All right, questions on this one? We'll do one more here. <clears throat> All right, next one we're going to find is Pn. Pn, so I'll call Pn x right there. All right, I'll call Pn x. All right, and let me call on someone here. All right, so how we go to Emmanuel. Emmanuel, can you set up a ratio for us here? What's a ratio we can use? What over what? <coughs> so what'd you say? Okay, we could do the five with the X. Let's match up the five to something on the same side over here though. And I'll, I'll come, actually, you know what? We'll just do it the way you asked. 5 over x, this is going to work. I'll show you to you. 5 over x equals, and then what would you say for the other ratio? Sure. Okay. This will work. Okay. Oops, I'm off the screen. My bad. There we go. Okay. This will work. Okay. Alternatively, using the traditional kind of way that we have the triangle proportionality theorem, what's another way we could have set this up? 5 over what? Over 2. Very good. x over 3. Now, you're not wrong, though, Emmanuel. That's why I, I stopped you, and I'm sorry I did, because you're still right. I mean, 5 and 3 are going to cross-multiply, 2 and the x are going to cross-multiply. 5 and the 3 are going to cross-multiply, 2 and the x are going to cross-multiply. So you're still right, so my apologies there. Okay? So 3 times 5 is 15. x times 2 is 2x. Divide both sides by 2, you get x is 7.5. Okay? Likewise here, 3 times 5 is 15 equals 2x. You get the idea. Okay? Now, again... Do we need to use the triangle proportionality theorem here? No, because we again have similar triangles. Okay, the smaller triangle is similar to the bigger one. Five, so if I wanted to just use similar triangles here, I could say five from the smaller triangle would match to what side for the big triangle? Five from the small triangle would match to what full side of the big triangle here? Not X. What's that? MN, MN which is seven. seven length of 7 total, right? Equals, okay, so 5 was from the small triangle, so x is also from the small triangle, over what's the matching full side to x? 
x plus 3 or 3 plus x. Exactly right. It's okay. This is a little bit weird. We have, you know, multiple variables, but it's okay. Cross multiply. 5 distributed to the x and the 3, so you get 5x plus 15. 7 times x is 7x. How will we solve this? Subtract a 5x over, guess what we get? 15 equals 2x, and then dot, 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 you can see we're going to end up with the same, same solution. Okay, so lots of options, lots of options. Be careful, though, that you're setting up accurate, you know, ratios and things. <clears throat> okay, so why don't you go ahead, turn the page there, and you guys try 5 and 6. Try, go ahead and give 5 and 6 a try. You can use whatever method you want to try and do it, okay? Use whatever strategy you, you like, you prefer. So let me explain how we how we can tell for sure. So um, you can match these two pieces up because they're both the part, same part from the same side of the parallel line. So you want to match these up in the same way. So you do right over the left. So you want to do B right over the 24, and that should still work. <coughs> Take a look, see here. Again, there are multiple ways to set this up, but here's what the solution should be. All right, 30 for uh, number five, 6.25 for number six. Okay, questions on any of that? I'll be happy to kind of like you know help you troubleshoot anything if you made a mistake. So, any questions on anything? I did these both using triangle proportionality, but again, you didn't have to, right? So for example here, for this one, I could have done it using similar triangles, 32 over 56 equals 40 over 40 plus x, right? That's one way to do that one. 
Same thing here, I could have done this one as like 8 over uh, 13 equals 10 over 10 plus y, and then cross multiplied and solved that way as well, okay? Should get to the same thing though, the same answers there. All righty. Okay. <clears throat> so one more thing we're going to talk about, and that is the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. So again, the, propor the triangle proportionality theorem, the normal one, says that um, if a triangle, um, if a triangle, uh, let's see here, now I want to mess this up. Where did I put it? Right here. Okay. If a line parallel to a side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So if a line parallel to a side, so line parallel to a side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, they're the other two sides, then uh, this line divides those two sides in uh, proportionally. Okay. The converse of that is going to flip that around and say if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it is parallel to the third side. So if AE over EB equals AF over FC, if that ratio is true, then we can say that EF is in fact parallel to BC. So it's kind of like going backwards. In the first, in the first situation, the first case, we were told EF was parallel to BC, and then we could conclude this ratio was true. In the reverse, we have this ratio and it's true, therefore we can conclude that EF is parallel to BC. Okay, that's all. And we'll go through this proof here too as well. Okay, so for step, for part A here, we're trying to show Okay, that we're given AE over EB is equal to AF over FC, and so therefore we're going to prove that EF is parallel to BC. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, again, is show that the two triangles are similar. So AEF is similar to triangle ABC, okay, and we'll do that here. So it is given that AE over EB is equal to AF over FC, and taking the reciprocal of both sides shows that, well, if we reciprocate here, it's, it's going to be EB over AE, and then FC over AF, right? We just kind of reciprocate both sides, okay? Now we're going to add one to both sides, okay? And we're going to add one by adding AE over AE to the left side. We're going to add AF over AF to the right side. So we'll have AE over AE plus AE over EB equals AF over FC Oh, shoot. I'm adding this to the wrong thing. I'm supposed to be adding it to this fraction. I'm going to put it over here. My bad. We're adding it to this, to this uh, reciprocal here that we, that we just ended with. So it's going to be EB over AE plus AE over AE equals, and then FC over AF plus AF over AF. Okay. Which we did that because we have common denominators here. Okay, so this can become one fraction, and we'll just call it EB plus AE over AE equals FC plus AF over AF. Okay. Now, what, what segment is really EB plus AE here? What segment could we call EB plus AE? What segment is that by the segment addition postulate? EB plus AE is really what? AB. Okay. So we have AB over AE equals, and what's FC plus AF really? AC over AF. Okay. So in other words, we have this AE and AB are in the same ratio as AC over AF. So now we have that. And since angle A is congruent to angle A, then these two triangles are similar by what, by what um, theorem in this case? We have sides, and we have A, and the sides here, it's side angle side. Okay, in this case. Okay, so as a result, we have Similar, you know, we have proportional sides, but also we have congruent corresponding angles. Okay, so in other words here, we're told to use corresponding angles of similar triangles to show that EF is parallel to BC. So angle AEF, this angle here, OK, 
okay? This angle right there is going to be congruent to what other angle? AF will be congruent to what other angle there? ABC. ABC, or just angle B, I'm going to put. But we'll put one out. You know, we'll put B, ABC. That's good. Because they're corresponding. Okay? And so EF is parallel to BC by the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. Okay? Remember, the corresponding angles theorem states that if you have two parallel lines crossed by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. The converse of the corresponding angles theorem says that if you have, cor if you have congruent corresponding angles, then the two lines and, uh, are parallel to one another. Okay, that's all. Okay, so then we got an example problem that I want us to run through here, and then we'll uh, get you guys time to... Um, Start on your assignment here too. Okay, so let's run through some of these here, applying that. Okay, so um, you can use the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem to verify that a line is parallel to the side of a triangle. All right, so here, for example, we'll verify that the line segments are parallel. So we're told that MN and KL, we want to verify that they are, in fact, parallel to each other. So you can see here, all they do is they set up the ratios to see if they work, right? So they put 42 over the 21, and they get 2. They put 30 over the 15, and they also get 2. So are these sides parallel? Would KL be parallel to MN? Well, yes. The ratios of the pieces here are the same. So then, yes, they are. Okay? Let's do letter B. Okay? DE, we want to show, is parallel to AB. Okay? Now we're told that AC is 36, and we're told that BC is 27. So what are the, how can we go about doing this here? What, what are the ratios we can set up here to determine whether AB and DE are in fact parallel to each other? What, what's a ratio, what are the ratios we can set up here? Or what can we do here to kind of get this, to start solving this particular scenario? What could we do here? Jenny, what do you say? Sixteen over twenty equals twelve over fifteen. Okay, so I see the twenty and the fifteen. Where'd you get the sixteen and the twelve? Aha! Uh -huh. So if the whole length here is thirty-six, and you take away the twenty, that leaves that to be sixteen. And they do the same thing for the twelve as well. That's the twelve plus fifteen gives twenty-seven. Okay, very good. So sixteen over twenty that simplifies to four fifths. Twelve over fifteen. Uh, we can divide both those by three, and we get, oh, four-fifths, check. Okay. So, is DE parallel to AB? Yes. Okay. Is that the only ratio that Jenny could have set up here? What's another ratio we could have set up here? Avery? 12 over 16 equals 15 over 20. 12 over 16 equals 15 over 20. Yep, that's another option. Anyone want to say another, another option here? There's another one. Brandon? 36 over 20 is uh, 27 over 15. Yes, also, because if we show that these triangles are um, similar to one another, then we can also say that AB will be parallel to DE as well. So exactly right. We didn't even need to find the 16 and the 12 there. We could have just used 36 over the 20s, 27 over the 15, and just used that ratio too. Okay. So lots of options, but again, make sure you are setting them up in a correct fashion. Okay. So go ahead. Why don't you try number nine real quick there. All right. And then we'll get you guys started on your assignment. Because <clears throat> I think that's the last one I want to talk about.
Okay, let's go to someone here. All right, how about Chrissy? Chrissy, what was your ratio you used here to check to see whether these were parallel or not? Okay, and did you determine that these two ratios were equal to each other? Yeah. Okay, so check they were equal, and so TU and RS are parallel. You can also write it this way if you want to. TU is parallel to RS, right? You can hear symbols and stuff like that. All right, very good. Questions on any of that? All right, let me get you all started on your assignment then. Okay, so on page, we'll start on page 637. Okay, that's when we'll start. We'll skip some of the, like, Page 637. I'd like you to do, um, well, three through nine odds. Okay. I'd also like you to do ten. Eleven and fifteen as well. Ten, eleven, and fifteen. Ooh, I want to give you one more, sixteen. Sorry, last one, 16. Okay, there it is. 16 as well. Please make sure you do 16 too. Okay. I like that one as well. Okay. Yes. One second. Aubrey, let me say one more thing. One last thing, folks, too. I did give you a 10 marks assignment as well. So if you finish this, you know, feel free to go ahead and look at that 10 marks assignment. One of the 10 marks assignment does involve some properties with quadrilaterals. Okay, so feel free to like skip that one if you're doing, if you're doing it at home and you can come in and ask me about it. I'll be happy to help you out with the quadrilaterals one because you've got to use some properties of quadrilaterals that we haven't quite talked about yet. But everything else should be good. Um, for this one, would you also be able to do 16 over 12 and 12? Yep. Because I didn't like, doesn't that not, 9 over 15 does not. That, it? it would. Um, you would oh, simplify. You simplify to it, yeah, exactly. Simplify. It, oh, simplify. Okay. It. Or you can also cross multiply it to see that they're okay. equal too. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, you got the rest of it done there. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes.